right? Right? So the five team are the boss, and then and over the secondaries. Right? So let's talk a little bit about the two, two, two scripts of us where I want to bring on board. So as I said before, for my, for my kick-ass sky source, me and my wife's nice sky source. Again, go watch my sky source brand video. Sky source will be a bigger company than Disney, man. That's how tall my company will be, man. And, and, and those two scripts of us who are chosen... Are gonna be the lucky chosen few. They're gonna be. They're gonna be working with my wife for a good. I don't know, twenty five. I don't know if, if they're like 50, 60 years old. They're gonna be working for me and my wife till the, for a good. Like I don't know, twenty five years, 25, 30 years, man. They're gonna be saved until they're old and they, and they die. So the seventeen who are gonna be working with me are gonna be lucky. They're gonna. They're, they're, they're gonna be old. They're gonna be. They're gonna be with me until they die. And what I'm gonna do is once my seventeen dies, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hang. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have my photographers take a picture. Of me, my wife, and the seven team, and I'm gonna hang. I'm gonna every time when they die, I'm gonna hang pictures of them in my in my in my in, in my office. So when so I don't know if in 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 twenty one hundred in twenty one hundred, when I hire me and my wife hire a new team, we're gonna tell the old team, yeah, this this was this was our first team, our first seven team. You're gonna so every time every time me every time this the, our, our team our team member our team members die, we hang a picture in our office, and you see and you see I don't know three hundred years go by, and you see like four. Four different teams of teams that work for for Ivan and Miji. Let's be top notch. Because we know why we're gonna be living forever in this world, man. No, I don't hate us. We're gonna be living forever in this world, and hence what? And you guys are all gonna pass away and die. Yeah, hence why you guys are gonna cry. Because you know me why we're living forever in this world. That all as generations pass, are gonna experience like glory where you guys are all gonna die, man. You're all gonna get old and die. Whereas we and wife are gonna live on forever. Hence the setup, obviously. Had you let me and be together and not cause mess. You would have seen my glory forever, and yet you chose to be stupid and cause this mess. Like you couldn't, you couldn't let go of your enemy. You couldn't do the right thing and say, you know what? Even though we can't see Adam and Eve have sex, they're God. They created us. Let them be together and let let see their glory. But instead, you chose to what? You chose to be envious. Let your enemy take over and be stupid. Hope you you somehow foolishly hope by killing this and man causes mess. I and Eve are you. No, the fact that you cause this mess, you made me pay a price. You made me pay a heavy price. You know, I have to deal with the horror mess for the rest of my life. And suffer death, you're also gonna pay a price. But you guys don't see it because you guys are blind. You're crazy people. Even if I don't, even if we, we kill an innocent man, Ivan will still make videos for us. Even if we don't talk about so many videos because you guys are fucking crazy people. You're nothing but a mess of me I've made, man. You don't see it now because you're blind. But once I come from death, it's finally gonna hit your eyes. Oh my god, like we're fucking messed up people. Yeah, you guys are a mess, man. You're you're, you're reprobate. You're crazy fucking people. You're nothing but a mess of me I've made, man. Crazy fucking people, man. Oh man, like it actually pisses me off how you actually think you actually think after causing this mess and killing this man and not even talking to me in the public eye, having my channel sabotage and then make videos for like that alone pisses me off so much, man. Because you guys are fucking selfish reprobate people, man. It pay, like you, and that and that's how you know I'm not playing around. Like, I'm not gonna let you do it like that. No way, man. You're gonna pay a fucking price, you're gonna be left behind and abandoned by God. Anyway, so as I said before, for the script developer position, you have guys like Dave Filoni and John Favreau. So John Favreau and Dave Filoni, those are good, those are two good cans for my script for position. You also have Ryan Johnson, J.J. Ames, and you also have the people who wrote Lord of the Rings: The Originals as well as what Avengers. You can hire one of those guys too to be your full time script developers, right? So, but Dave Filoni and John Favreau, guys who I who I really want. But the problem is they're 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 contracted for they're contracted for Mandalorian. And 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 just just like they're contracted for Mandalorian, you know what I'm saying? And there's a good chance Hollywood Hollywood might perhaps offer them a shitload of money to stay more than what I'm even willing to pay them. I don't know. I'm willing to pay them a lot of money, but there's a good chance Scott Hollywood might even try to pay pay them more money to keep to have them stay. Obviously, you have J.J. Ames and Ron, Ryan Johnson. But Ryan Johnson is working on a Star Wars trilogy, and J.J. Ames signed up five hundred million dollars in Hollywood. And he's not going to want to take a pay cut and work for my company. I'm willing to pay J.J. Ames a lot of money, but I'm not willing to pay him, like, I don't know, like, $100 million a year. No, that's crazy. I'm willing to pay him a lot of money, but not, like, not, 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 like, $150, $60 million. No. The moment you do that, you're being stupid, and you're being stupid with your money, and they're ripping you off. Right? As all those guys are good cans for my, for my, for my script developers, just for my two script developers. Again, for salaries for John Favreau, I'm willing to pay him a nice... I'm willing to pay him a nice twelve million for the last of his hands. I'm willing to pay him three million dollars a year, which is one point eight in your bank account, which is a nice fucking paycheck. So you make three million for the first year, three million for the second year, three million for the third year, 
and three million for the um and three million and three million and three million for the um for the fourth year. I'm gonna pay him on that salary that way he works hard for me, which is a nice fucking paycheck. That's as nice, which is a nice fucking paycheck. Day for only I'm willing to pay him a two million dollar yearly salary. So he'll be making eight million for the four years of Zanes, which is nice. One point two million dollars in your bank every year for the four years. With that salary, you can buy a nice five million dollar car, a nice five million house. John Faber already has money in his bank because he's rich. With a three million salary, you can buy a nice seven eight million dollar house, nine million dollar house. Hence, if you want them, your seven those your two screwers work hard for you. You got you got to pay them a lot of money. Pay them a lot of money that way they all live a great life in Vancouver and they work hard for you. And for the organization, we I'm willing to, it's two and a half years. I'm willing to pay John Faber twelve point three million. And Dave Filoni, I'm willing to pay him six point three million for the three years, for the two and a half years. All right. So for John Favreau, I'll pay him twelve million for all the movies. That way, because because he's worth a lot of money, pay him a lot of money. That way, he works hard. So every for every movie, he's for the term of each movie, he's getting seven plus million, seven point two plus million in his bank for the term of each movie. So I don't know for or, for after Zanus, John Favreau will, will have seven point two million dollars in his bank, which is a nice paycheck, man. But again, I, I don't know how much Disney's paying him. Disney might be paying him more. I don't know. But that's how much money I'd be willing to pay John Favreau if he if he were hired for my company. I'm willing to pay him twelve million for Zanus, and Dave Filoni I'm willing to pay eight million. Right. So I'd be willing to pay him twelve million for Lasso for Zanus, twelve point three million for Organization Movie, twelve point six million for their Unique, right, and twelve point nine million for the Hidden Vampire Movie, and then for the Western Gangs Movie, he'll be making thirteen. By that time, he'll be making like thirteen million. But by that time, he'll be old. Because the Western Gangs movie, you're looking at like twenty, like four years from now. So around that, around that time, John Favreau will be, will be in his seventies. He's like, he's in his early fifties right now. So by the time I make the um the Western Gangs movie, he'll be old. John Favreau, Dave Filoni will be old too. Dave Filoni will be in his like six late late sixties or something like that, mid sixties. But that's how much money I'm willing to pay a guy like John Favreau and Dave Filoni. Yeah, so Dave Filoni, I'm willing to pay him a nice two million, which he'll agree to us. In Hollywood, he's probably making I don't know, he's probably making around that amount for 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 Mandalorian. I'm willing to pay him two million for the four years, which is eight four years, which is eight million, which is we'll be making four point eight million for the four years, which is a nice paycheck. The organization we'll be making six point three million for the organization movie, which is two and a half years. Again, only if these two are available, because if they're not, I. They're still contracted, and I obviously cannot hire them. J.J. Abrams, I'm, I'm willing to pay. J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson are good cats too, but J.J. Abrams signed a huge half half a billion, half a billion dollar deal in Hollywood, and Ryan Johnson is working on his Star Wars trilogy. Right, so guys like J.J. Abrams, and Ryan Johnson, they're good cats, but because Ryan is working on his Star Wars trilogy, he's oh, yeah, I obviously can't hire them because my my script developers that my script developers who I'm hiring. They're gonna be. I'm, they're gonna be signing exclusive contracts. I'm gonna tell them, hey, I don't want, because you're signing up for my company. I don't want you doing side projects in Hollywood. No, I want you working only for my company. That way, you're not distracted. So, for if, if Ryan Johnson were to be, work for my company, he, he would have to what abandon the Star Wars trilogy project to work full time for my company. Obviously, J.J. Ames would have to what would have to abandon, but he's not gonna want to abandon that deal because it's a half a billion dollar deal. I'm willing to pay J.J. Ames because J.J. Ames is worth three hundred million. I'm willing to pay him a lot of money, pay him a lot of money, but like, even then, it's nothing compared to how much he's making in Hollywood, right? Right. So again, if I were to hire J.J. Ames, I would be willing to pay him sixty million. So for Zanus, if J.J. Ames were hired, I'd be willing to pay him a four million dollar yearly salary. So I'd be willing to pay him sixty million for the four years of Zanus, which is a nice fucking paycheck. That's nine point six million dollars in your bank. And for the organization movie, I'd be willing to pay him sixteen point three million because they all get a one hundred thousand dollar race for movie. So the organization movie, I'd be willing to pay him sixteen point three million. For their unique, I'd be willing to pay him sixteen point six million. And then by by the hidden value movie, he'll be making seventeen million, which is which is like ten million in your bank. So I'm willing to pay JJ Ames a lot of money, obviously, but even then, that's nothing compared to how much he's making in 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 in, in, um, in Hollywood. Ryan Josh and I'd be willing to pay him. I'd be willing to pay him nine point two million for the for 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 for, for So two point three million, nine point nine point two million. Two point three million is what? Two point three million times four is nine point two million. If my math is correct, I might be off my math. Right, two point nine point two million. I want to pay him nine point two million for the four years of Zanus, and I want to pay him seven point two million for the organization movie. 
and seven point five million for their unique. Because I'll be paying uh, Ryan Johnson. I'm willing to pay him a two point like three million dollar yearly salary, which is a nice fucking paycheck. That's like one hundred and like that's one hundred. That's like that's one point like uh, that's one point like four million after taxes in the bank, which is a nice fucking paycheck, obviously. So I'm only paying Ryan Johnson that money. But again, he's working on his Star Wars trilogy. So he's pretty much out of the picture. And J.J. Abrams signing huge deals in Hollywood until like 2024. 20, around 2024, that's that, that's around that time I'll be starting my my, my Sky Company. 2023 around there. Because there's a good chance I'll be seeing my wife next year. Sometime next year I'll be seeing my wife, 2022. Sometime in the fall or something like that, next year I should be done paying it. Because this is the year I'm, I'm this is gonna be the year I'm gonna be making the announcement. So sometime in 2022, I should be seeing my wife. We take our year off. Yeah, sometime in 2024, early 2024, me and my wife are going to be starting SkySource, man. Yeah, me and my wife are going to be starting SkySource. Right? So, um, and Ryan Johnson, and Ryan Johnson's trilogy, I heard, isn't going to come out until like 2026 or 7. So, so, so he's, he's pretty much out of the picture. And J.J. Abrams is, is, is signing a huge deal until 2024 for, 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 for his what? For his for his for his bad robot company. Again, you're welcome. I'm your company out there, right? For the head chefs, I only want head chefs who own respected restaurants. So, for example, a chef, a chef who 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 is who is respected. Uh, for example, I want it like for example for the head chefs. I only want chefs who own respected restaurants. So if you own a franchise, you're out. No, I want chefs who own respected, like good, good quality restaurants, not fast food restaurants. No, a respected restaurants, right? So for example, a chef who owns a, a, a restaurant in Las Vegas or two restaurants here and there, I want one of those chefs to work for my company. Three of those chefs work for my company. For example, the chef, the chef, like I said before, the, the guy who won Master of Canada the first season, Eric Chong, season one, he's a good candidate for one of the head chefs. Um positions as he owns a, a restaurant R and D in Toronto. So R, the letter R, the letter N, the letter D in Toronto. So for all you guys in Toronto, check out R and D restaurant. Again, you're welcome, Eric Chong. I'm promoting your fucking restaurant out there. So all you guys in Toronto, you can check out his restaurant. He owns a restaurant called R and D. He's a good candidate for what? He's a good candidate for for, for, for the um for the um for the head chef position. For one of the head chef positions. Because he owns a restaurant with one of the respected judges on Master of Canada, R and D in Toronto. Again, you're welcome, Eric. I'm promoting your restaurant for you. Again, for the three head chefs, I'll I'll be hiring. I'll be willing to pay them a nice four hundred thousand for the term of the movie, which is a fucking nice salary. So for the four, I really, like I said before, for the three head chefs I'm hiring. Again, there's a good chance Eric Chong will be one of those chefs. I'm willing to pay them a nice four hundred k. For the term of the movie, so I'll pay them ten grand for the first year when I fly them in. Again, the head chefs are gonna get the party up my rooftop condo. So if a guy like Eric Chong is hard, he's gonna, he's gonna get the party up my rooftop condo, man. For for for, for the first year, obviously, because the first year I'm gonna be doing quite a bit, of quite a lot of takeouts. Um, um, the first year, but the second year I'll be doing takeouts like every every day, five days a week for like seven, eight, seven, seven and a half months straight. It looks me crazy. For the second year, you know what I'm saying, but. But um, so the head chefs are willing to pay them four hundred k. So I'll pay them ten grand to plan the menu the first year. The second year they don't get paid because all they're going to be doing is sending out schedules to the assistant chefs who are hired. The third year they're going to be flown to Switzerland. They're going to have to what train the chefs. Obviously, they're also going to be cooking food seven days a week for the for the for the, for the crewmen that are, are going to be flown in the third year. I'll pay them one ninety thousand for that year, and in the fourth year they're going to be cooking food seven days a week during production. For the crew and the actors, me and my wife and the actors, I'll pay them a nice two hundred k for that year. And four hundred thousand dollars after taxes is like two hundred and like I don't know, two hundred and like um, two hundred and like I don't know, forty thousand, two hundred and seventy thousand, something like that. You look, you so there. Imagine getting a nice two hundred and forty thousand dollar check. Two hundred and forty thousand dollar check in your bank. After a couple of years, it's a nice paycheck. And so head chefs. Are, they're, they're already making good money off the restaurant, but they're also making extra money by working for Ivan and VJ's company. And if you're making $240,000, you can buy a nice $600,000, $700,000 house for yourself, man. You can buy a nice $600,000 house. Hence, those head chefs are going to be living a nice life. You can buy it. You can get you can get a Benz with that kind of money. 
You can get it. It's a big car in your budget, but you can get it. With that money, you can, you can buy a nice, at least a nice Benz for yourself. You should you can easily lease a nice Benz for yourself with that kind of money. A nice Mercedes Benz, a nice BMW, a nice Lexus for yourself. And so it's head chefs for me living a great life. Yeah. That's the amount of money. They also get $12,000 raises per every movie, which is nice. Getting an extra twelve grand is a nice check. It's, it's like $100 added to your paycheck around there, right? 1000 bucks added to your paycheck every month. Which is a nice. So imagine making an extra 1000 bucks a month for, for your paycheck. That's a pretty nice raise. That's not, it's not a bad raise. All right. So what? I'm going to pay them 400 k for the term of the movie. Which is a fucking nice salary for a head chef. Now the reason why I'm paying them a lot of money is because making food is seven days a week for the third year and fourth year is a shitload of fucking work. Hence why I'm paying the head chefs more money than the photographers and the head chefs and the um and the photographers and head chefs and the web designers because web design and, and, and photography and grab design is a lot of work, but it's not as much work as cooking food, man. Cooking food, I've worked in the kitchen. Cooking food is a lot of work. So imagine working seven days a week. Because the chefs are going to be working seven days a week. Imagine working seven days a week, cooking food, prepping food. It's a lot of work. Hence why I'm paying the head chefs the most money out of all, out of my main, my main crew. So after the seven team, the head chefs, the photographers, the graphic designers, the web designers, those are all my main guys. Hence why they're probably on a rooftop condo. Those guys I'm resigning, but the head chefs I'm paying the most money because they're going to be doing the most work. Hence why I'm paying them 400k because you're looking at shit with work. Right. But I'm still paying the other people a lot of money. That's 300k and 350k is a nice fucking paycheck. I'm paying the web designs 300k, the graphic designs I'm paying 300k, and the um and the photographers I'm paying 350k. The reason why I'm paying the photographers more money because the, the pictures are the foundation for your for your for your, for your, for your company. The ads, the ad pictures on the website, the, the posters, the Blu-ray case covers is very important. You need to hire. I'm gonna hire top-notch photographers who work in the magazine companies, who are on the magazine. That's why me and my wife and the actors are gonna look like models. You're gonna see these ads pop up on the website, a surround site website. Every, everything, every time you click on a site, you see all these ads pop up. Oh my god, Ivan, 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 and these actors are fucking movie stars. Yeah, our nice posters, a nice, our, our nice ads picture on the website. Nice posters. I'll have Zanes come with six posters instead of four. I'll have it come with six posters. I'll have Zanes come with six nice posters. Six posters. And all my other movies, I'll have it come with four posters. I said two, but no. It's nice to have a lot of posters. I'll have Zanes come with six posters. Like nice, six nice posters. Me and Mark are going to be like movie stars and the actors. As well, it's going to come. You're looking at top notch Blu ray case cover for the, for, 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 for the pictures. That's why you hire the best cameraman, the best cameraman, and you hire good graphic designers to edit your pictures, and you also hire a good web designer for, to, to edit your web, to, to code your website. You're looking at surround stuff, that's something top notch, right? So I'm gonna pay them a nice 400k for a tour of the movie, which is a fucking nice salary for a head chef. Now the reason why I'm paying them a lot of money is because making food seven days a week for the third year and fourth year is a lot of fucking work. Hence why I'm paying the head chefs a lot of money. And so be living the, the rich life, the, be living the nice rich life um, from the money that I'm paying him. Hence, if Eric Chong is hard, he's going to be saved. And he's going he's gonna to be living what? The rich, the rich, he's going to be living the rich life. He won't be living the slub life, but like, if you're making 400K and you own a restaurant and you're all making money off your restaurant also, you're, 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 you're considered rich. And Eric Chong, if he were hard, he'd be, he'd, be, he'd be an upper class citizen. He'd be rich, right? He'd be really, really rich. And so if he's hired, he'll be, he'll be, he'll, he'll, I don't know if I'm hiring, but I'm just saying he's one, just like John Farrell when they throw a good cans, someone like Eric Chong is a good candidate for one of my head chefs. And if he's making that, if you're making that kind of money, you're going to be, you're, you'll be living a nice life. You buy a nice $500, $600,000 house in Toronto for yourself if you want to. You're living a nice life. Yeah, man. A nice, nice fucking life. Right, they'll be living the rich life from the money that I'm made from, from, from the restaurant. They'll be making a lot of money from Skies as well as from the money that they're making from the restaurants. Um, right? As well as the money they're making from Sky Source. Hence, whoever is chosen for the head chef positions will be saved to, as I'll be resigning all my three head chefs. So the three head chefs, the three head chefs, the photographers, I'll hire three photographers, three head chefs, um, two graphic designers and one, I don't need one web designer. You don't need two web designers. No, I'll hire one web designer, two graphic designers, because you have to add the pictures, and I'll hire three photographers. All, and three head chefs, all those people are going to be resigning as well as the seventeen. 
So those are the lucky ones, as well as all the supervisors. All the supervisors for, 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 for each section, I'll resign all those guys, pay them 200k, which is fucking nice. But the assistants are the only ones who I'm not going to resign because there's not going to be, there's not, gonna, not a same amount of crewmen will be coming back. For Zayn, you're looking at 1,600 crewmen. For the organization, you're probably looking at 600, 700 crewmen. So half the amount, almost half the amount of what? Of um, the amount of crewmen in Zanus. Right. Right. So the, so the three, the three head chefs will be saved too, as I'll be resigning them all. My three head chefs for my Sky Source. Again, you're looking at a luxury menu for the Sky Source for my Sky Source company. So because I'm hiring top notch people, and I don't want line cooks, line cooks are out. I want chefs, sous chefs who worked respected restaurants for the assistants, and I want chefs who own respected restaurants who have experience to be my three head chefs. They, to qualify for the head chef position, you have to own a restaurant. Otherwise, you're not qualified. I want three head chefs who own a restaurant to be qualified for the head chef position. And the assistants, you can have people who worked at respected restaurants. Not line cooks, no. People who worked at respected restaurants to work for my company. Again, you're looking at a top-notch menu. A top-notch luxury menu for, 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 for my company, man. You're looking at hamburger sliders. Hamburger sliders. You got your nice crispy pizza. To, you know what I'm saying? Pepperoni, cheese. Um... Pepperoni, cheese, veggie, you got your fried rice, a bunch of sweet meats, your huge salad bar, like macaroni salad, potato salad, vegetarian salad, all these options. Peas, corn, you know what I'm saying? Some nice stuff with your rice. You have your ribs and you have your wings. You're looking at, you're looking at top menu, man. Breakfast, you have eggs, bacon, sausages, French toast, pancakes. You can even have waffles and donuts. That's it. You have for drinks, you have coffee, French vanilla, and you have like orange juice, apple juice, and like... And like and, and, and like you know what I'm saying orange juice, apple juice, and like fruit juice, something like that. For for your breakfast. Dessert, you have cheesecake, chocolate cake, cake, white cake, you know what I'm saying? Apple pie, blueberry pie, strawberry pie, apple crisp, and a huge variety of ice. You also have all you can drink milkshake. Same time the crewmen also get three beers every week. Not every day, no, because beer's not good for you. I'll do it th every time the crewmen knackers get three beers once a week. And they also get um a once a the crewmen also get a once a month party the third year. So just like me and my wife and the actors of Vancouver get a once-a-month party, the crewmen all have them do a once-a-month party in the middle of nowhere for the crewmen in the third year. So they're going to be partied up 12 times the third year. They're going to have a blast. Production, they don't have that because it's filming. But third year, the crewmen also get a once-a-month party. Yeah, they're getting spoiled. And you're looking at They're going to get fed nice-ass food. Hence they're all, I'm pay, because I'm paying a lot of money, they're all going to work hard for me. They're not going to slack off. Yeah. Now about this topic, two minds. Again, for all of you that have seen my... My, 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 the difference between a great writer and a great storyteller video. Well, I thought it would be cool to reiterate what I said in that video, considering I am now in the process of finishing all my phases this year. Um, before I cry my eyes out and pay this fee and become king and piece the fuck out. So remember that video that I made in 2019 about the difference between a great writer and a great storyteller. I thought it would be cool to make a video called Two Minds. I'm going to reiterate my topic on that video, how there's a difference between a great writer and a great storyteller. Right? There's a difference. So in other words, you know, when someone says someone is a great writer, what do you mean? Do you mean he has good English or do you mean he's a great storyteller? So, so you, 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 it's very important that you differentiate between a great writer and a great storyteller. Mo all storytellers are not great writers. All great writers are not great storytellers because our minds think differently. And that's a scientific fact. I, I, I challenge anyone to, 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 to prove me wrong. If you're a great writer, chances are you're not a great storyteller. If you're a great storyteller, chances are you're not a great writer because our minds think differently. It's impossible... It's impossible to have your mind download all the information and also be imaginative. No way, man. Either you're imaginative and you don't have the USB to download all the information, hence you're a great storyteller and you have the gift. You have a picture brain to convey those words in story to form. Or you have a big USB to download the fluency of the English literature, but you don't have the picture brain to convey those words in story to form. I'm telling you right now, all these people who are great writers, chances are they're not good storytellers. All these people who are great storytellers, chances are they're not, what, they're not great writers. It's just the way our minds think. Our minds think differently. I'm not. I'm a great storyteller, but I'm not a great writer. These teachers, these smart teachers in English who flunked me, they're great writers, but they're not great storytellers because they don't have the gift. They don't have the picture brain. They don't have the imaginative mind to convey those words in story form, but they have the USB to write beautiful English. But they don't have the picture brain to convey those words in story form, but I do because I have the gift. Yeah, you're looking at a good hour and a half video, and I'll be done here. 
So as I've said before, when someone says he is a he is a great writer, it is very important that you define what you mean. Do you mean he is a he's great at writing stories, or paying down or or paying down beautiful English, or or paying down beautiful English? As there's a difference between a great storyteller and a great writer. So when someone says this guy is a great writer, what do you mean? Do you mean do you mean he has beautiful English, or do you mean he's a great storyteller? Right? Or do you mean? Or do you mean he's a, he's he's he, he can pen down beautiful English, but he doesn't have but he doesn't but he do, but he doesn't have what the, the the capacity or the or the gift to convey those words in story form. All these teachers and Darcy, all these students who who were smarter than me in English, who were smarter than me in English, who got good marks in 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 in, in Darcy, they may be smarter than me in English and and, 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 and pen down beautiful English, but yet they don't have the USB to download the fluency. They don't have they don't have the picture brain. To convey those words in story form, yet I do because I have the well, I have the gift, and they don't. So all these students, so all these students and all these teachers who 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 are ma who are amazing at English, they may have the USB to write beautiful English, but I guarantee you a lot of them try to write a book, especially fancy, and they can't write it. Why? It's not because they're stupid. No, it's because they lack they lack the gift, they lack the picture brain to convey those words in story form. Whereas me. I may not have the USB to understand and, and write beautiful English, but because I have such an imaginative mind, I'm able to convey those words. I'm able to take those words and and, and, and apply it in, 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 in story form because I have a picture brain. Because I can see, because I can, because I have such an imaginative mind, whatever I see in my mind, I write. I can write down as I can convey those words in story form. Whereas whereas a, a great writer, they don't have that imagination. They only have the USB to write beautiful English. But when they try to imagine... The, 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 there's nothing there because they don't have the gift. They don't have the create the creative mind to convey those words in story form. You see what I'm saying here? So I'm gonna keep saying this. Whenever someone says he he or she is a great writer, it's very important that you, that, that 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 you define what it means. I recommend if you want if you if, you, if to all you people out there, if you if you if you want to say someone is a great storyteller, say he is a great storyteller. Don't say he's a great writer because there's a difference between being a great writer and being a great storyteller. I'm not a great writer, but I'm a great storyteller. Whereas other people are, are, are have big USBs and they're great writers, but they're not great storytellers. So if you say, so if you if you say this author is a great writer, don't say he's a great writer. Say he's a great storyteller. Because if you say he's a great writer, people can get confused. They might think oh they might think oh he writes beautiful English. No, say he's a great storyteller. Whereas if someone writes beautiful English, say he's a great writer. That way you're not confused. Obviously, because if you say he's a great writer, I'm gonna ask you, what do you mean by great writer? Do you mean does he does he, does he, does he tell an amazing story or does he write beautiful literature? You know, say there's a difference, right? Right. In other words, right. In other words, great writers have a big USB to download the information. You know how you know you know how when you buy a USB. And you plug you plug you plug you plug it into your laptop, and then it receives information from the computer. Well, that's 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 a perfect example of, of a great writer. A great writer has a big USB to, to download the information of the, of the English literature. They have the, they have the, the capacity to download that fluency of the English literature, but they lack the imagination to convey those words in story form. Where they don't have the in other words, they don't have the gift. Whereas great storytellers, they don't have that USB to download the fluency of English literature, but they have an, a picture brain. They're born with a gift. It's a picture brain to, to convey those those English words in story form. So being a great storyteller, be, being a great storyteller is like a gift. So if you have the gift like me, or the gift like Tolkien, or the gift like Brian Saracen, or the gift like like George R. R. Martin, those guys are obviously born with a gift because they're able to what. They're, 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 they're able to what? They're, they're able to write, write down an amazing story. But I guarantee those guys don't are not that great writers. Why? Because they don't. Because because they have our minds think differently. They have the, they have the picture brain. So J.R. Tolkien obviously has a picture brain like me. C.S. Lewis had a picture brain like me. But I guarantee those guys weren't the greatest writers. But yet, but yet they're able to what? Pen down um, a beautiful story because they have they have the gift like me. Obviously, yeah. So great writers have a big USB to download the fluency in the English literature. So all those teachers, so whenever you see a teacher who's smart in English, he or she has a USB to download the fluency of the English literature. Like, a, like it's like plugging a USB onto your computer, and it receives information. It saves information, receives information, and you save it. It's say it's saved onto the file. What's well, a similar example here? 
the, 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 all these smart teachers who, who are great in English, who are great writers, they have the USB to, to, to what? To download the information, obviously. But they lack the imagination to convey those stories. Because I guarantee you, a lot of English teachers, they try to write, they try to write amazing stories and they can't do it. They can't, they, 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 and they, 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 they can't do it. Why? Because it's not because they're stupid. No, it's because they, they have a different mind than, 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 than a great, they have a different mind than mine. Their minds have a big USB to download who's in a signature, but they lack the imagination to convey those words in story form. So I'm going to count up here. 